Yeah, yeah, what's going on guys? Seth Spartan here, nutrition training and hormone expert and Prometheus Pro Bodybuilder with Prometheus HRT, the world's best testosterone and hormone replacement clinic. Use my code SPARTAN to save on testosterone or HGH replacement. Guys, today we're going to be talking about anabolic steroids, short-term versus long-term effects, everything you need to know. So let's get started. Guys, first and foremost, we're going to start over with the long-term effects, uh, just because these are the most important and uh, most of these are not reversible. So we'll start with long-term effects, unbiased, uncensored, and then move in over to short-term effects and then go through all of this. So hopefully, you guys, this video will be uh, different um, than a lot of other videos in the sense that it's just going to be a very, very full video, uh, really telling you guys everything uh, that you ever wanted to know information wise about anabolic steroids in terms of side effects both long term and short term so without further ado let's get started all right so long term effects first and foremost plaque buildup in the arteries why do i start with this this is probably the biggest cause uh, of death from anabolic steroids okay you know we're going to talk about all the short-term side effects but in terms of uh, anabolic steroids and health and longevity and everything else uh, you know the biggest effect is plaque buildup in the arteries um, you know you know when when anabolic steroids came out up until say the 2000s there was not a ton of information or medical research on long-term effects why it just they're just it was all just short term uh, you know there was speculation but there was no concrete uh, uh, concrete medical um, knowledge in this realm. So today we are, you know, we're very blessed to basically have access to all of this information. So 100% undeniable long-term effect from anabolic steroid misuse or abuse. Uh, you know, think anything, um, you know, super physiological uh, for long periods of time. The longer you go, the higher you go dosage-wise, uh, the increased uh the increase in these long-term effects. So first undeniable, uh, you know, long-term side effect of anabolic steroid misuse or abuse is plaque buildup in the arteries. Uh, I did another video, you know, if, if you think you're going to use 500 milligrams or 750, you know, for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, even if you're doing all your blood work and, you know, let's say you do 500 milligrams or 750 milligrams of test a week, even testosterone, you know, the safest anabolic steroid. Even if you do 500 milligrams or 750 milligrams of testosterone, you know, for five years, 10 years, 15 years, you're going to be causing plaque buildup in the arteries. The only question is uh, how much based on genetics and um, nutrition and everything else. But it's going to be happening. So first and foremost, first effect uh, is plaque buildup in the arteries. And this is... Uh, Typically in bodybuilders, the, the cause of death, um, not just bodybuilders, but but athletes, uh, you know, around the world, all different sports. This is the biggest one. This is the number one uh, killer in terms of uh, long term effects from anabolic steroid misuse and abuse. All right. Moving on. Number two, enlarged heart wall. I talk about this in plenty of other videos. Uh, watch my 2000 milligrams of testosterone uh, per week for one year video. Uh, I talk about that in here, so we'll just we'll just touch on this briefly. So we talked about the plaque buildup in the arteries. Enlarged heart wall is basically, uh, you know, an athlete's heart happens to both natural and not natural athletes. That's when the left ventricle, the left chamber, gets bigger to basically uh, adapt uh, to the needs of the body for more blood. Okay, not a big deal. When you're done training, it goes back to normal. And there's no increase in mortality. Enlarged heart wall refers to when the actual heart wall, the wall of the heart of the cardiovascular tissue actually gets thicker. Now, this is a problem because, uh, as we know, you know, a great example is cars. You know, the bigger engine does not mean more efficient. It's the same thing in the case of the human heart. You know, we're not talking about that left ventricle getting bigger, you know, which is called an athlete's heart. And, you know, a regular athlete's heart or enlarged heart, depending on a me some medical terminology. Uh, but... An enlarged heart wall is where that heart wall actually gets thicker. Therefore, it can't, it's not as effective at pumping blood out. So it's kind of interesting because the heart muscle is hypertrophying. It's getting stronger. It's getting thicker. 
but this actually makes it harder uh, for the for the heart to pump out more blood because a bigger heart, you know, in terms of size, thickness is not always better. And this also adds to mortality. And this is an effect, again, that's only seen with anabolic steroid use, misuse, abuse. Um, so in large heart, well, it, it should be noted, you know, with plaque buildup in the arteries, you know, you can't really do much to reverse that. There's, you know, once, once, that's, once that's happened, it's happened. However, in, in terms of enlarged heart wall, some, some great uh, medical studies I was looking at shows that you can, it's about 50%, you know, 50% is permanent after you discontinue uh, anabolic steroids, but the other 50% uh, percent, uh, 50 of it is permanent, it stays, in, and 50% about, uh, you know, goes back to normal. So it's kind of, it's kind of permanent, but, you know, halfway permanent. And uh, there's some things that you can do to, uh, mitigate this if you know you're one of these people that has already caused uh, you know an enlarged heart wall in your heart uh, doing things like cardio every day just to basically uh, you can't undo it but you can make your heart more efficient more effective and reduce uh, any heart problems in the future moving on and this would be the second biggest problem you know in terms of long-term effects from anabolic steroids Moving on, we talked about this a little bit uh, just because we talked about plaque buildup already, but cardiovascular disease. Now this, you know, this circle encompasses a large, uh, a large uh, amount of heart conditions, but you know, just putting that in there, cardiovascular disease, why over and over and over all the bodybuilders, athletes that are abusing or misusing anabolic steroids, uh, you know, usually Unfortunately, the cause of death is always, always, always comes back to the heart. Uh, you know, most of the time it's plaque buildup in the arteries, but there can be other uh, structural issues from using um, or atherosclerosis, the hardening of the artery walls, and other things from uh, long-term anabolic steroid misuse abuse. Again, like I said, if you think you're going to do 500 or 750 milligrams, which isn't considered much at all in the bodybuilding or fitness world, if you think you're gonna do 500 milligrams or 750 milligrams for five years, 10 years, 15 years, total time on and not cause any, uh, you know, plaque buildup in the arteries, uh, you know, or enlarged heart wall, you're just wrong. You know, the science and the medicine we have today clearly shows that, uh, you know, time on plus dosage, total time on plus dosage, you can be monitor monitoring your labs and, and doing all this preventative stuff, but regardless, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty much the same as smoking cigarettes in that regard. Every cigarette you smoke adds to, uh, it's, you know, you can't, you can't get rid of it. You can't unsmoke it. You can't untake the steroids. Same kind of, same kind of concept in terms of talking about, uh, basically, um, uh, unreversible medical, um, impact. So moving on to the last point, guys, uh, permanent shutdown. Now this is controversial. Just because, you know, bodybuilders or a lot of, you know, uh, fitness gurus or athletes, they don't want to admit this. Um, but based on, based on, based on animal, let's, let's start in animal studies. Based on animal studies, okay, with the latex cells in the, in the testicles, those are the ones that produce testosterone. After two weeks of, after two weeks of, um, after two weeks of shutdown, okay, from uh, androgens or two weeks from two weeks of shutdown on the latex cells in the testicles, and this is caused by again uh, anabolic steroids. So anytime you take anything over, it's about 200 milligrams of testosterone a week or any anabolic equivalent. Anytime you take over 200 milligrams ish a week, you're causing about total uh, pituitary and hypothalamic shutdown. That means the testicles are not receiving the signal to produce testosterone and also the other signal to produce sperm. So the problem is, is that in the latex cells, you have the latex cells and the serotoli cells in the testicles, the latex cells produce testosterone and the serotoli cells produce sperm. The problem lies in the latex cells where after two weeks of the testicles being shut down from, you know, either uh, testosterone, anabolic steroids, SARMs even, uh, SARMs cause a ton of shutdown. I did a video on that. Look at, look at my video, SARMs, are they worth it? Um, again, people don't talk about this stuff, but um, after two weeks of shutdown, the latex cells, some of them start uh, going dormant in terms of 
they're not able to be brought back online. Uh, so there are many bodybuilders who, you know, go on, run one cycle, two cycles, three cycles, even one cycle, and their natural testosterone, they cannot get back to the same level uh, that they were before they took these exogenous hormones. So permanent shutdown is a long-term effect. Now, the reason it's in green, the reason I put it in green, maybe that's kind of hard to see on the video. Easy for me, but I think it's kind of hard for you guys to see. Uh, having said that, the reason that this is in green is because for the most part, I want to say, you know, I don't want to give a number, but maybe 90% now with the most advanced medicine and protocols, if you can get your hands on, um, you know, depending on where you live, but good hormone replacement clinics such as Prometheus HRT, they offer this. You can basically take certain compounds, certain drugs to reverse this. And 90% of the time you can reverse any permanent shutdown that you have caused from taking anabolic steroids. Um, the first and best bet is not HCG because HCG does not, uh, first off, HCG only acts on the testicles directly and HCG molecule uh, fits the LH binding site. It's about 80% and it doesn't barely even, it, HCG mimics LH and it only will stimulate FSH at extremely high dosages. So even if you take tons and tons of HCG and you bring your testicles back online, uh, even though it's not a complete fit to FSH, like I said, even if you use tons of HCG, you still have pituitary atrophy, which again, nobody talks about. And you can have your testicles back to, you know, we'll say almost 100%, but then the problem is, is that your pituitary, if the pituitary is atrophied and can't send the signal to your testicles, what good is it? So talking about advanced medicine, reversing permanent shutdown, your best bet, guys, uh, is going to be number one, again, either go to Prometheus, HRT, or any other advanced hormone replacement clinic. Tell them, hey, you know, I screwed up, you know, I do my labs, do my testosterone level, you check all that stuff, and you tell them, you know, I want my testosterone production back, uh, you know, to normal, et cetera, et cetera. What they can give you the best, the very best, um, the best medication is gonadorelin hydrochloride. Gonadorelin is called GNRH gonadotropin releasing hormone, GNRH. Gonadotropin is a synthetic copy of uh, GNRH. GNRH is the hormone that the hypothalamus uh, sends. It's the neurotransmitter hormone that the hypothalamus sends to the pituitary, which is like this far away in the brain, to signal the pituitary to produce LH, luteinizing hormone, and FSH, uh, follicle stimulating hormone, which then the LH travels to uh, the testicles, uh, hits the Leydig cells, tells them to produce testosterone. The FSH hits the Sertoli cells, tells the, tells the Sertoli cells in the testicles to produce sperm. So, man, I made this too long, but I wanted to give you guys all the information. So basically, if you're taking gonadorelin uh, hydrochloride, HCL, uh, what's going to happen is, is that that powerful, um, you're, you're going to be basically reversing any pituitary atrophy. Then the pituitary will wake up and come online and then reverse any testicular atrophy. So the only drug you really need and it has to be, you know, pharmaceutical grade from a physician. It doesn't have to be through Prometheus HRT. Just make sure you're getting uh, Gonadorel and HCL uh, from the pharmacy with a prescription. Uh, and if it's a good uh, hormone replacement clinic, they will be adding um, stabilizing agents so that it does not go bad. Because if you go online and you buy any, you know, garbage uh, Gonadorel off the internet or these peptide sites, they do not add stabilizers. So after about one or two days, what you have in there will be useless. Unfortunately, okay, you know, I, you guys can believe what you want, but you know, I'm telling you guys how it is. So, uh, you know, best case scenario is uh, Gonadorel and HCL to reverse, completely reverse pituitary atrophy and also testicular atrophy. If for some reason you can't get uh, Gonadorel and HCL, which I don't know why you wouldn't, maybe you don't live in the US, uh, then triptorelin is the second best option, but that it's nowhere near as effective as gonadorelin. Why? Because you can use gonadorelin HCL every single day until your pituitary and your testicles are back to 100% working condition. Okay, moving on. Short-term side effects of anabolic steroid abuse misuse. Let's go. So, I'll be better if I stand on this side. So, we've got a long laundry list. I'm just going to shoot through these and make comments as needed, and we're going to wrap this video up. So, anabolic steroids, you talked about the long-term side effects. 
unbiased, uncensored, take it and leave it. You might hate me for going through all these terrible long-term effects, but again, we have so many, uh, so much, not only medical research and studies on um, these long-term effects, which we didn't have before, proven, undebatable. You know, if you don't want to take it, that's your fault. That's not mine. I put everything out here for you guys. All right, moving on. So uh, let's talk about the short-term effects. Acne. Acne, high blood pressure, bloating, high red blood cell count, hair loss, oily skin, uh, low estrogen sides. Look up. that. That's a whole other list by itself, okay? The low estrogen side. So go ahead and you can type into Google, you know, go to any, any decent... Uh, you know, medical site, type in symptoms of low estrogen in men. It's just a laundry list, okay? So so we talked about all, all these, and then low estrogen sides, that's a whole other category. And this, guys, is not caused by anabolic steroids. The low estrogen sides are caused by people taking testosterone or another anabolic steroid that converts to estrogen, and then guess what they do? They take way, way too much of an anti-estrogen, you know, arimidex, anastrozole, whatever and they and they bring their estrogen levels too low and the low estrogen sides are no joke uh they are wicked you know i have i i know people who you know uh, crash men who are taking i don't remember how much testosterone they're taking but they're taking testosterone and then they're taking way 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 too much uh arimidex and they felt borderline suicidal they don't want to live anymore uh, their joints hurt so bad they have joint pain that's symptoms of low estrogen so you can Plug in low estrogen sides into Google, go to a medical site, and you can just boom, 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 go through all the low estrogen sides. But that's not caused by uh, anabolic steroids. That's caused by people taking an anti-estrogen or an aromatase inhibitor um, in response to also taking uh, an aromatizing uh, anabolic steroid. Moving on. Bad body odor. <laughs> you, know, you know, this is caused by, again, overact, uh, overactive sweat glands or sebaceous glands. Um, uh, bad body odor, sadness, happiness, anger, sexual dysfunction, uh, and that's basically tied to the shutdown issue in most cases. Once you shut down, that can, that can throw things off in terms of, you know, the endocrine system and also male libido or female libido and function. So, uh, bad, this is a big one, bad HDL and LDL ratio. ratio. So HDL, high density lip, lipoproteins and low density lipoproteins, those are our the levels of cholesterol in the bloodstream. Typically, anabolic steroid misuse abuse uh, is going to basically destroy your HDL levels, your, your good cholesterol, bring it down, and jack up your LDL. It's kind of interesting the reason that the LDL actually jacks up when using uh, high doses of testosterone or anabolic steroids is because uh, the body senses all these androgens, okay? And, but body senses all the androgens, but the brain thinks that the body is the one making the androgens. So it's, it's saying, oh, I'm making all these androgens, so I better make more uh, of the raw component for these androgens. The raw component for uh, testosterone in the human body is what? Cholesterol. So the body thinks when you're taking, if someone's taking high amounts of anything, any high amounts of testosterone or anabolic steroids, what's happening in the brain is the brain is thinking, that it's the one creating these hormones, so it needs to ramp up cholesterol production because again, that's the raw component for testosterone. Uh, but this this only makes things worse because the liver is going to be pumping out more and more and more cholesterol when you don't need it. And so this is the big problem with the cholesterol ratio. And then the last on the list here is high estrogen sides. Again, this is a whole other laundry list. Uh, you can look up high estrogen sides for either male or female. Again, into Google, just go to a verified medical site. It's a whole laundry list. But guys, uh, with all the short-term side effects, there's really, you know, this is all going to go away. It's all going to be reversible after uh, you get off. Even the hair loss, you know, there's so many treatment options now for hair loss in men where you can actually have your entire, you know, basically hair transplants. They can give you your full head of hair back. You know, it's incredible what you can do today in medicine. Uh, you know, it, in terms of incredible what you can do, you know, we also talked about permanent shutdown that used to be permanent. Now with things like uh, gonadotrophin and HCL, you can actually reverse a lot of this stuff almost completely. Uh, so anyways, guys, um, we went through all the short, short term side effects. All this stuff can be, you know, uh, in terms of short term, this goes away. You know, once you, once you get off, it's all reversible.
all of this is reversible. All of this is reversible, except uh, plaque buildup in the arteries, not reversible for the most part. And large heart wall, that's about 50% reversible. Base 40, what was it, 46%, so 50% in one of the studies I saw. And also uh, the permanent shutdown. Um, again, if you can get the right compounds from a pharmacy or through a doctor, then you should be able to fully, pretty much fully reverse permanent shutdown. Uh, the only caveat to this is that you need to have your HGH levels uh, higher in the range uh, to do that because every hormone in your body uh, responds better um, when HGH levels are higher. Uh, you know, we can talk about receptors and cells being more, more sensitive, uh, but the permanent shutdown, you know, as long as you can get gonadorel and HCL and also keep your HGH levels to the higher end of the range, you know, again, think when you're 18, uh, you should be able to come back. So guys, that's pretty much it. Anabolic steroids, short-term versus long-term side effects, everything you need to know in one video. Uh, again, don't hate me too much for talking about all these long-term effects that nobody wants to hear, but you know, I'm gonna say it how it is. I will put a link to a, I'm gonna put a link in the uh, description um, to a very, very good study. Um, a very good study talking about plaque buildup in the arteries and a large heart wall cardiovascular disease. Um, you know, one of the better studies we have on that. Again, proving this for, pe for people that I can already see in the comments who are in denial. Oh, anabolic steroids doesn't cause plaque buildup in the arteries. It doesn't ca cause an large heart wall or CBD. That it, that's like saying cigarettes don't cause lung cancer. Okay, I mean, it, it, this is this stuff is proven undeniable. Unfortunately, okay. So guys, that's pretty much it. Seth Spartan, stay safe, stay healthy. Um, you know, do everything right safely through a doctor. If you need testosterone or HGH replacement, again, go to prometheushrt.com. Uh, use my uh, code Spartan to save some cash. Otherwise, you know, it does not matter. Uh, you know, go to any good advanced hormone replacement clinic. Um, otherwise, if your levels are good, you have no need of that. Guys, Seth Spartan, stay safe, stay healthy, and we are out of here.